Hey everyone, this is Dr. Annalisa with Journey to the Goddess TV, where I regenerate ancient feminine wisdom for modern women and men. But hey, women, you are my target audience. So I am thrilled today to have Simran on my show. She's someone whose work I have been following for years, literally years. And she really came into my life at a time when I was just starting my spiritual journey. She was a guide for me in that way. So it's such a delight for me to have her on the show today. And before I bring her on, I'm going to remind you that if you like this video, then please hit like, please share, please subscribe to the channel, and please leave a comment. Before we dive into our conversation, I'm going to give a quick bio. Simran is the author of the book Signs. Everyday Encounters with Pathways, Turning Points, and Divine Guideposts, a book in the Common Sentience book series. She is a love catalyst, rebel humanitarian, and sacred soul activist. As the number one rated host of 1111 Talk Radio and publisher of Nautilist Award-winning 1111 Magazine, Simwin creates art, online courses, books, and media to bridge humanity's experience and expression. A TEDx speaker, Simran speaks about the beauty of our humanity in all of its expressions and the radiance of our divinity as an eternal experience. Simran is the author of the gold award-winning books, Conversations with the Universe, Your Journey to Enlightenment, and Your Journey to Love. Simran has also released a new trilogy on self-realization, Living, The Seven Blessings of Human Experience, Being, The Seven Illusions That Derail Personal Power, Purpose, and Peace, and knowing the seven human expressions of grace. Simran resides in Charleston, South Carolina, and is devoted to the journey of the soul. Now I'm going to have Simran show us her book so that we can take a peek and find out where you can purchase it. Yes, it is available worldwide, anywhere that books are sold. Uh, you can get it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Chapters and all of those places. So, uh, and definitely at Sacred Stories Publishing, which is the publisher of this book. It is part of the Common Sentient series. It's actually the ninth book in the series, and it is signed Sacred Encounters with Pathways, Turning Points, and Divine Guideposts. Thank you. Oh, fabulous. And I, I want to give a shout out to Sacred Stories as well for connecting us. It's really such a treat for me to have you on the channel. And I'm going to share with you now because I really think you being here today exemplifies the message in your book. I discovered 1111 Magazine years ago at Vince <laughs> Noble. I still have copies of it packed. Oh, away. my goodness. Yes. Oh, that just warms my heart. <laughs> Yes. And I, I wanted to find some, uh, find them and read them before I came on today, but they're kind of packed away and hidden at the moment. But the point is, is that I found it. I still have your magazines because they spoke so much, speak so much to my soul. And I found them at a pivotal time at the beginning of my spiritual journey. And I've just kind of followed your journey over the years and I'm on your email list. And so when I started Journey to the Goddess TV, every time I'd see your name pop up, I'd be like, oh, I should contact her and see if she'll be a guest <laughs> on my show. And so it's it's been there, present in my mind, but it's kind of through the power of, you know, intention and following the signs along the way that you're here. <laughs> You're here with oh, me. Oh, I love that. I love that. And it's so true. Like there's so many things in what you just said in regard to signs and how they show up and the power of allowing those open doors because 1111, when it came to me, I wasn't real clear as to what it was until one day it came to me what it was. And, and so many individuals at the beginning of their path, that is what they start seeing. They start seeing 11, 111 or 1111. And, but most people don't realize that that 1111 signifies a gateway and it's a gateway to mastery. Mm -hmm. And each one symbolizes one of those pillars of mastery. So it's the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. And so you're walking through that gateway to master yourself, to master life. And those prompts show up to say, the universe is with you. We've got your back. Just dream it and it will come. 
and keep moving forward in the steps that you are here to move forward. So anyone that sees 1111, I just, I call them my 1111 or family, which is, which is fabulous. And then it often happens that after someone gets to know me or meets me or hears me speak, they will start seeing the 1111s. But for all of those that don't see it, you are seeing something. And that is equally important. And it also illustrates the signs. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so I think that's a good segue into your story. I, I read your story at such a pivotal moment in my life. And I think when it got to the point where I was going through like a massive breakdown and a big spiritual shift, I thought back to your story and a few others I'd heard along the way. It helped me know that, that the breakdown was part of my process and that there would be growth and transformation on the other side, even if I couldn't see it. So I would love it if you could share your beautiful 1111 story. Yes, absolutely. You know, the falling apart of our lives is such a profoundly beautiful piece. It doesn't feel good at the time, but once you've gotten past it and you've gotten far enough along to look back, you can really see the beauty and the intricacy that was required to get you to where you are. And so my journey begins as most people's journey, which is, you know, in the midst of confusion or chaos or drama or dysfunction. And I was going through a really difficult relationship and I had had an arranged marriage. I couldn't seem to figure out why it was not working, why everything within that marriage was painful. And I couldn't understand why so many experiences in my life had felt that way. And I had gotten to the point where I had kind of said, you know what, I'm ready to just call it quits here. This is, this is not the place I thought it was, you know, it's way too painful, but I asked for a sign on my prayer room floor. And that next day, you know, I woke up and I started seeing these 11s and 11 11s constantly. And it's not like I just knew what 11 11 was or that these th things all of a sudden was this huge awakening. I think so often the spiritual world can talk about these big awakenings that people have. Mine was not a huge awakening. It, it kind of stretched out. And, you know, there's this period where at first, if you're seeing something repeatedly, you start to think you're a little crazy or other, if you're going to tell someone, they might tell you you're crazy right. because no one talks about this. No one talks about the ways that life can talk to us. No one, especially at that time, no one was saying anything about numbers appearing or anything like that. But about four weeks later, I finally, in a very angry voice, yelled out to the universe that, you know, tell me what these numbers mean or make them stop. And that was when it really downloaded what this was. And I figured if I can be talked to in numbers, I can be talked to in many ways. I wonder what all those ways are. And that led me down a truly profound personal growth path. And that's ultimately what I think signs really represents. You know, we have this very simple built-in way to be able to unfold a personal growth path. And it truly comes by what shows up in front of us. Yes, yes. One of the things that really stands out for me in your book is the idea of trust, trusting the signs trusting your path. And I think that that's really hard for a lot of people <laughs> who are so used to controlling every aspect. You know, we're a society that likes to control everything. Yes. And trust requires, I think, the letting go. Yes. We live in our heads. We want to control everything. And ultimately, I think the biggest challenge for most people is that they don't trust life. They don't trust other people. And most importantly, they don't trust themselves. So often, especially as children, at least I know for myself, you know, boundaries were so blurry and I have been empathic. And so, you know, to trust was really difficult because what I would hear was different than what I would see, which was different than what I was thinking. And so none of it was congruent. And so I didn't know which place was the truth. And so it took a long time to try to figure out what I could trust and what I couldn't. And it really wasn't until the signs. That's truly what taught me that I could trust because I knew they would show up. I knew that they would lead the way. 
And it gave me this trust in life. And once I started to be able to trust life to be there and to trust myself to continue the conversation, because a conversation takes two. We can't just wait for the universe to keep sending us stuff. We have to engage with questions, with responses, with inspired action. And then we have to also apply what mirrors and signs the universe is giving to us to begin to trust people, our relationships, our choices, and be all right being human. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because the human experience is so vast. So what would you say to like people who are at the beginning of this journey, who don't even know what it means to trust maybe? What, what would you say to them? I would say that they can approach this as an experiment, that they don't have to believe it, that if they are just willing to be open to the idea that maybe it's possible. And I'd also say not just the novice, but also the experienced seeker, the person who is someone that's done a lot of spiritual study. The beautiful thing about signs is it really does speak to people where they are. So you could be anywhere in that range and you're going to get something out of it because it talks a lot about both the beginning steps and how to uncover uh, discovery of the signs and your intuition and trust and where all these signs come from. But then it also goes into some of these bigger topics like why signs appear for us individually and how that serves the collective. Or are these collective experiences in some type of sign to serve our individual paths? Or how does this balance the masculine and feminine energy? I mean, really there's so many signs that show up and it's it's more a matter of shifting our lens to look at life in a completely different way. For example, in coming on your show and uh, looking at the type of work that you do, it was such a profoundly beautiful sign in a mirror because so much of what I'm talking about right now and the work I'm trying to express through signs for people has to do with bloodlines. It has to do with where we came from. And with your focus being about the menstrual cycle and the sacredness of that and the sacredness of our blood, there's so many signs in that. It kind of goes back to where we began this conversation where you asked, you know, where did my story begin? And you talked about yours, you know, the breakdown of life. And I talked about my breakdown of life. And what is that menstrual cycle? It's the breakdown of something that was there that can no longer produce life. Right. But it's a sacred, sacred release that has to happen so that new life can come. So what more perfect to sign than that? And part of the reason that we're in these places that we're having to regain the trust is because we do carry what our ancestry had. We are carrying the karma or the thoughts or the beliefs or the imprints of our bloodlines. And so there's so much in there and it's, it's really an opportunity for us to become more curious, to delight at the wonder of life, to notice that everything is a sacred encounter, that there are so many beautiful pathways that show up for us, and that these little dots and pings that happen, they are these turning points for our life, the turning point that led you down your path, the turning point that led me down mine, or the divine guideposts that say, pause stop for a second, pull back, let the universe do something for you at this moment, and then inspiredly act again. So there's so many subtle and beautiful teachings and modelings that occur as we start to discover the signs. Yes, uh, there's so many points I, I want to touch on there. And just to bring it back to the personal, for example, you seeing that and reflecting that back to me, my work with menstrual fluids and the menstrual cycle is a sign for me because sometimes I go in my head and I'm like, why does this matter? Who's who is it going to resonate with? Am I on the right path? So even hearing that reflection is a confirmation. So th this is the work in action. That's what's so beautiful. <laughs> about it. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And the fact that you have a red flower back there behind you, like, you know, can we notice the subtleties? Can we notice the small picture that's there because what's being asked is to see the small picture 
that is our life, but then to look at the bigger conversation that's taking place around it. Like these are the very ways that signs shape everything. And it's anything from numbers to birds, to flowers, to insects, to animals, to books that fall in our lap or songs that show up on the radio. There's so many ways that this conversation starts to unfold. Yes. And a few moments ago, you were talking about the personal and the collective. And obviously, I think coming through this pandemic together and all of these worldwide events that we're all so plugged into because of, you know, technology, what would you say are some of the collective signs that we're experiencing right now and that are asking us to pay attention to them? Yeah, there's so many right now. If we go back and we start to explore some of the things that took place, you know, around women and around some of the Me Too and the misogyny and all of that kind of thing. A lot of that had to do with looking at our own masculine and feminine imbalance. Yes. And, you know, whether you're a man or a woman, it was asking us to look at the shadow aspects of our masculine and our feminine. Right. You know, where are we masculine dominant, where we're pushy and we're overbearing because we have both sides in each one of us. You know, where's the feminine submissive or being repressed? And how do we bring those into healthy balance? COVID, it represented a virus that completely had everyone have to pause, have to mask. And so all of a sudden, what the real mirrors were was what is the virus in our minds, in our society that is really attacking us all and causing us to go into lockdown other than the the virus that they were talking about, but literally the virus that's locked down humanity. Right. right. What are all the masks that we're wearing that we're not willing to see? They're literally now showing up in our face because we're there and maybe we're not supposed to speak, but we're supposed to look instead and listen. So there are all these subtle signs that show up. The banking collapse that took place last Friday. Yes. Money is the metaphysical equivalent to relationship. It's all about our value. What are we valuing in the world? And so when we look at the collective experiences and we reflect those back to ourselves rather than becoming reactive, rather than trying to point a finger or blame or go out there, these people need to fix something. We can take that inside and say, where is that in me? What is it trying to teach me about me? how am I treating myself or someone else this way? And all of a sudden we begin to shift ourselves instead. Mm -hmm. And that shift in ourselves is going to shift the external, but, and that is really the only way it works in the flip of the coin. We can also just focus on ourselves and the, the smaller mirrors that are showing up, the signs that are showing up around us and simply by willing to do the work in a very devotional way, we become sacred activists. Mm. And by being that type of sacred activist, it causes a ripple in the outer collective without us even realizing it. So it's really beautiful how life has this infinite synergy between the inner and the outer. And it's more a matter of us stopping to sense, to listen, to look, to take notice, to pause, and then to inquire than it is to be you know vocal or loud or try to push our own agendas and the signs are trying to tell us that right now right 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 instead of being reactive yes listening being receptive and I love what you keep coming back to essentially is like taking inspired action through the listening and what really caught my attention is something that I've been thinking about for a little while now, and that is the difference between ego desires and soul desires. And I like to joke that like, if my ego were still in charge, I'd still be living in New York City, chipping away at my acting career. But instead, I followed the call of the goddess, and it didn't make any logical sense. And then, you know, eight years later, I went through graduate school, and now here I am <laughs> with you. <laughs> And it doesn't always make sense, but the when I decided to follow the signs, the doors just started opening as opposed to when I was chipping away at the acting career, like they were just like roadblocks and roadblocks and roadblocks. And so- those were signs, Annalisa, that because, you know, people like to look for the 
um, the bliss signs, the synchronicities, the aha moments, and they get very excited. You know, oh, a sign showed up. You should have heard what happened, or I can't wait to tell you what I just got. It was such a beautiful sign. But we also discount them at the same time. You know, we ask a question and we ask the universe, show me a sign. And we get one. Yeah. We'll say, well, I'm not sure if that was actually the sign. Could you send me another sign? And then we get that one. And then it was like, just so I can be sure, could you send me one more sign? So yeah. it's like, we also don't listen. And when we don't listen, that's when we get the unorthodox signs. And those things do show up like someone being fired from their job or a relationship ending or a pipe bursting in one's house or a flat tire or these different pebbles, rocks, and boulders that show up in our lives as signs to pivot. Yes. When we do, it sends you down a different pathway that is more beautiful and more of the heart and soul. Right. And yeah, hopefully more enriching if you <laughs> allow yourself to do that. Yes. And, and, you know, I think this is related to this concept of the law of attraction. And, le and let me say what I mean here. So I've been in several conversations with people recently who have felt very disillusioned by the law of attraction. And I keep wondering privately to myself, I don't say it to them, if it has something to do with they're not listening to the signs of their soul, and they're still going down the ego path when they're trying to attract something you know i think that the the ego is this really beautiful gift but what we have not realized is we've made the ego the master and we've become the slave mm -hmm. and a lot of that is due to our conditioning so like you have said we're going to attract the signs that illustrate where the ego is. And I think the misconception is that the ego really often comes from the very wounded, uh, shadowed place. We don't realize that because it, it developed in order to protect us. And I talk about that in the book Signs as to where do the signs actually originate from. And they originate from the time we were wounded as children, and then we form this ego. So when we get those signs that don't feel so good, it is trying to pivot us, just as you say, and that can be called the law of attraction. And yet, if you just try to positivize yourself, you're not really going to have a sustained manifestation. So some of that law of attraction stuff doesn't really work out the way that people think it will. And the reason that feeling is so important is because when you do come from your heart and soul, and you really are following the signs to get there, you really do attract what is more fulfilling and sustainable. Right. And that's when a whole different level of signs start to show up, an entirely different vibration of them that really does step into the realm of synchronicity and miracles and all of that type of, of mysticism. Mm -hmm. And so now you've been on this journey for many, many years. If you could go back and speak to yourself in that moment when you're on the floor saying, help me, help me. What, what might you say now with the wisdom and knowledge that you have now to that woman? <laughs> oh my goodness. You have no idea that your journey is going to show you so much. You know, I have learned that on our personal growth path, especially if we're really diving deep spiritually and we're, we're committed to our soul growth, we have to be in a place where we realize that we are the journey. You're not on a journey, you are the journey. And when you can approach your journey from that place, then you can experience any and everything from a place of embrace and lightness and welcoming, regardless of how it appears. And so, you know, I will share this hard truth that I think needs to be said from time to time. And that is when we are really saying we're going to commit to our soul and we're going to commit to growing, we are really giving the universe free range to remove everything that is not of the highest order in us. Because deep down, that's what we most want. Right. And so these signs for me began in this really beautiful way to lead me forward. But the more I dug in and committed to my soul path, I was committing to take everything from me that is not the highest. And I got the most extraordinary signs every step of the way and still do. But it also led to a journey where sometimes, you know, things were really pulled away from me 
and other times miracles happened in the same day. Like it, you will experience the full duality for a while because until you can get to a place of neutrality, that is what has to happen to decondition you from all that you took on. Yes. Wow. That is why the signs are important because they help you hold on to something. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. You up against the bumps. <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. I feel like I've been like naturally inclined to follow signs my whole life. So for me, I'm like, it should be natural for everybody. <laughs> like it's easy for me. But I, I know in reality that it's that it's not natural for everybody. You give many examples of the different kinds of signs that appear. So maybe we can talk about some of those as well. Other than yeah. the numbers, for example. Yes. Yeah. How have some of the signs appeared for you? What are some other things yes. besides the numbers that have shown up for you? Um, hummingbirds. That's that's okay. a big sign. Yes. <laughs> and I know joy sign. <laughs> yes, exactly. That means joy, joy, joy. <laughs> joy. And sometimes sometimes I really feel like they're messengers from my maternal side. So to, uh, my my mothers and grandmothers, et cetera, et cetera, going back. So very ancestral sign. Sometimes I felt that they were not just messengers of my mother's, but I had a friend that died recently and there were some hummingbirds around me soon after his death. And I felt like that was his presence saying, I'm here. It's all going to be okay. It's out to you for that. You know, you're, you're bringing up a really important point that I talk about in the book signs, and that has to do with the various dialects. My first book was Conversations with the Universe. It was my original book on this topic that was a two-time gold award winner. And I introduced the concept of dialect there and expound a little bit more on it in signs. And what I mean by that is two people could be in the exact same place and see the exact same sign, hummingbird, for example. For one person, it's going to mean one thing. And for the other person, it's going to mean something else, just like it did for you, ancestral or around this person that has just passed. And that's the beauty of signs. You know, originally when we open to them, we're going to run to Google, we're going to run to a book, we're going to run yeah. to all the places to look up what does this mean? What does this mean? And that's to satisfy the ego or the mind. And then the more you get comfortable with the fact that signs are actually going to come to you. Then all of a sudden, if you'll just take a breath, close your eyes and ask yourself, what does this mean? You're going to start to get your own message. And that's how signs help you to develop intuition. I go through a lot of practices within the book so that people can cultivate their own dialogue and dialect with signs. And it becomes an even more intimate and beautiful experience with life when you do that. So I love the fact that you know what the hummingbirds mean for you. Yeah. And beyond the general meaning of joy. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Actually, since you brought up some of the practices that you do around this work, would you be open to sharing one of those practices with us here now? Yes, I think that would be great. What if we do a quick meditation to meet the signs spirit that actually plants the signs within all of our lives? Okay, perfect. So I'm going to ask everyone to close their eyes and take a deep breath and settle into your body. And essence always resides in the body. Essence is not something we have to pull into the body. We actually have to pull ourselves into the body because we've lifted out. And so I want you to take three deep breaths, very slowly, inhales four, six or eight counts, and exhales four, six or eight counts. And with the first breath, I want you to bring your attention down to your heart and pull the breath into that heart space. And with your second breath, I want you to deepen and bring that breath down into your gut or your hips. And with your third breath, I want you to bring yourself all the way back into your body by going all the way down into your big toe, both toes, filling your feet completely, allowing all of you to pool inside of your feet and fully fill out your body. And then maintain a rhythm of breath, a nice even rhythm 
of four, six, or eight counts. And as you continue this rhythm, I want you to bring your attention back to the heart. As you inhale and exhale, imagine great stone pillars that are the 1111 placed at your back, which is the opening of the heart. And you're going to enter this beautiful cavern. As you move past the 1111 pillars, you step into this lush and beautiful velvety landscape. It is soft and rich. It is warm and tender. And as you move into it, you feel very safe. And you see the many pathways and chambers that you can move into. As you inhale and exhale, a golden path opens before you. And you begin to walk along that path. And as you do so, every step you take lights up that golden path even more. And you see the sparkles of gold trickling off from side to side with every footstep. As you inhale and exhale, going down this path, you start to notice that the footprints that you are making are actually already there. And you're simply putting your foot inside of each footprint. As you continue to go down the path, you're going to curve around the bend. And when you do so, you're going to come across a golden shimmery waterfall. Next to it is a giant oak tree. All around that oak tree, there are golden acorns, leaves that are golden, and a gentle swing that sits behind the tree. As you move around the tree and you go to sit, you see a golden being, an essence, that is sitting on the swing and asking you to come over. And as you sit beside it, you see that it has a basket, a large, large basket of wares. As you inhale and exhale, and you lean over and you peek into the basket, all of a sudden, you recognize certain signs, things that you have seen along your path that you may not have noticed before or that you may have noticed repeatedly. You see certain numbers. Perhaps there's some feathers. There might be certain crystals. But there's one particular sign resting on the edge of the basket and the essence nods its head for you to lean over and pick it up. As you do so, you lift it into your hands and you see something etched on this particular sign and you bring it closer to your eyes. And when you do, there's a special message from Essence to you. Inhale and exhale and take in what that message is for you. It might be a word or a phrase or it could be a symbol. And know that this sign is appearing, these words or this phrase is appearing in response to something you've been asking or praying for. As you remain on the swing, Essence picks up your left hand and places a key right inside. As you look at this golden key, you intuitively are understanding what this key is designed to open. As you inhale and exhale, you slip back and lean in against essence, allowing yourself to be fully embraced 
allowing yourself to immerse in that golden hue. As you inhale and exhale, all of a sudden it's as if your eyes are open and you can see in a way that you haven't seen before. And you realize that essence was always there, not separate from you, but around you, inside of you, holding you and guiding you. As you inhale and exhale, gently get up from the swing and now move back around the tree, remembering the message that you got and noticing the golden glow that surrounds your body and understanding now why the footprints were already there. As you step down the path again, let out a little giggle at how each step creates more gold on the path and how the cosmic joke was always that essence was something to be reached for when all along it's been placing the signs on your path to simply lead you back to yourself. As you make it down through the golden pathway and you weave your way past the many beautiful chambers of the heart, watching the gold and the trinkets scatter as you take the steps, you find yourself again at the opening of the 1111 gateway. Now as you peer outside from the doorway of the heart, notice how life looks a little bit more in color, how things are a little brighter, and how you are going to be more present to the things that happen upon your path, because you know the essence within has already placed them there. Inhale and exhale. Once again, taking a deep breath, bringing that breath down into your hips, and another deep breath down to pull into your feet so that you remain fully in your body, in the embrace of essence. Shake out your fingers and your toes. Allow your shoulders to shrug a little bit. Shake out your belly and gently open your eyes when you're ready and come back into the space. Thank you. Hmm. I would like to share with you, if I may. Yes. Yes. I want to share this with the audience too, because it, again, exemplifies everything that we're talking about today. And this friend of mine who passed away recently, he and I had a very deep spiritual connection. And early on, he told me that I was his key. I was his key to reawakening his spiritual side. And he said that to me many times over the years. After his passing, I felt he had re he had connected me with somebody a few months after he had passed away. But I mean, in the physical, he connected me with this person. And I felt like it, it was a spiritual connection for my benefit. As this has gone on, he, what he was trying to tell me, I think, is that the, this person is my key. And so in a meditation a few months ago, my friend handed me back his the key that I had given him. And then just last week, we were on the key theme again. And I was like, I need a sign. I need a sign. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, we're going to bring the word key or the key somehow is going to come into your life three times. Well, I kind of demanded it three times. <laughs> and then last night I was like, I've only seen it twice. I've only seen it twice. Where's the third time? <laughs> And they were like, it's coming soon. It's coming soon. And then when you, when it came through in the meditation, it was just so clear. I was doubting Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> and we do demand the signs. Every one of us do that. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm like, I, and it couldn't have come in the most perfect, like, you know, package. Like that was the perfect way for me to get confirmation and, and s stepping in and seeing the world and, and 
a whole new with a whole new set of eyes as you led us through the at the end of that meditation it was just so perfect so one, of the, one of the beautiful things about trust and about signs and particularly what i discovered as i embarked on what i called the rebel road many years ago which was a way for me to prove to myself and to other people that signs really do show up for us and will guide us every step of the way. And, and I was profoundly shown that on that 11 month tour, but what it also taught me was this level of trust to show up in the moment and believe the signs that come, believe in yourself, believe in your essence, because I don't ever prepare for anything. I show up and let it be spontaneous. And so for that to come through and particularly the key for you and however it came through for other people, you know, those signs, we are signs also, you know, they show up in everywhere, in everything. And so it was definitely, definitely a message for you because it was very clear in my head when I was moving through the meditation myself. <laughs> That's, amazing. That's amazing. And I also love what that just shows is your innate trust for life, that you're able to just show up and trust that you will know what to say. You will know who you're supposed to talk to or, or what you're supposed to do in a situation. Once you start trusting the signs, then you can start to trust yourself, like to move through life at that deep level. It's, it's, probably profoundly the, the most important piece, because when we do trust ourselves, then we can fully show up. When we trust ourselves, we can be fully present. We can handle any and everything that appears in our lives and know that we will be guided. And so signs become this way that almost the adult gets to be the child again. We get to rediscover the world. We get to rediscover the magic and the mystery that we knew to be true as children. But the big people told us what we were seeing, what we were connecting with, what we were communicating with was all our imagination. But it's not our imagination. Yeah. It's reality. We got sucked into the illusion. Right. We were living reality. So this is about bringing reality back and letting life be the full sacred encounter that it was intended to be. Yes. I want to go back to one point that you brought up earlier around your work with bloodlines. I'd actually love to hear you speak more about that work. What what do you, what what specifically are you doing? What does that look like? How does that relate to your work with to this book and and helping people encounter and interact with their signs? So my work originated around signs it really was how i have personally grown and and spiritually expanded in ways that i never thought possible in the same way when i encountered or, or decided to embark upon that journey that 11 month journey to prove the signs to myself oftentimes when you pour so much light on yourself everything that is dark within you must come up or everything that is dark within your life must come to the surface to be seen. And so I ended up uncovering a whole ladder of consciousness, which is far more to talk about than we have time for on this particular episode. But what I can tell you is it resulted in a trilogy, the trilogy that you see above me. And it was living the seven blessings of human experience, being the seven illusions that derail personal power, purpose, and peace, and knowing the seven human expressions of grace. So 777 became another very powerful sign that started to guide me everywhere in the last few years. And in the first book, Living, the very first blessing is the blessing of life. And each of the blessings have a set of gifts that come in for you with that particular blessing. The gifts that come in for the blessing of life are the gifts of signs, symbols, and synchronicities. Mm -hmm. So it ties back in. And so when I began my work with signs, I didn't realize that was just the beginning, that it would open up to this whole other experience, understanding, transformation, transmutation, 
alchemical experience that would connect completely to bloodlines and ancestry and masculine and feminine energies and the multidimensional reality that we are. And so for individuals that really want to understand the nature of life, understand themselves, open to discoveries on the inner landscape that delight and awe them, to begin with the signs is the most powerful place to begin. Once you've gotten into that and you've been delighted by that, to really understand how then those lead you to the blessings, the illusions, and the graces would be to go to the next trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I had no idea. I had a thousand more pages in me. So. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And do you teach courses based off of what you've written in those books? I'm in the process of creating courses on that. The three books above are more like oracles. They are books that okay. you will open to a page and read. They're meant to be read extremely slowly. And you can read signs while using that as a daily devotional. So signs is the kind of book you want to pick up. You want to read, you want to explore, you want to understand because you will activate that in your life immediately. Right. Trilogy is something that belongs in every spiritual seekers library. It is going to be your go-to on a daily basis. And those are books that you really should only read maybe a paragraph a day out of each one, because it's such profound, dense work that it has to work within you and you will have a lot of awarenesses. So, you know, science is the book that you're going to read and chuckle and read again and can read beside any other book. And these are going to stay on your nightstand and be your morning and your evening devotional. Got it. And signs has, it's a compilation of different people's stories as well. So people, when they read your book, they'll be able to get different perspectives on how signs show up. As they yeah, yeah. So conversations with the universe was really my own personal experience and all the different ways that I discovered signs were speaking to me that world, the world was speaking to me. What I love about the Common Sentient series and being able to be a part of it with this particular book is the book is broken down into three parts. So the first part really helps you understand signs, the history of them, where they came from, why we even receive signs, you know, how those originate, and then all types of signs that can appear, both the good ones the superstitious ones that we have an incorrect idea about and those that we would call bad that are not really bad. They're just pointing us in a different direction. And then the middle section is powerful because it's an opportunity to see it's not just Simran saying this, this isn't just Simran's encounter, or this just isn't Simran and maybe Annalisa's encounter, but there are so many people having their experiences with signs in so many different types of ways. And so there are beautiful stories about angels and guides and feathers and all types of things, which will delight. And you'll probably find yourself in many of the stories. And then the final section is the how-to. It is how do you then start tapping into your signs? How do you expand that experience? How do you expand your intuition and your trust? How do you gain a greater understanding of connecting the dots or understanding the echoes of signs and then creating not just one sign aha moment, but a complete dialogue, a paragraph, mm. a whole conversation out of stringing the signs together. So it is a beautiful experience for those that wish to partake of it. Beautiful. One more question that's more to the to the essence of the channel, exploring the divine feminine. So I really feel that we're at a tipping point where the feminine and or the divine feminine, there are many signs that she's rising in the culture. And I'm curious if from your perspective, if that statement resonates for you or if you're seeing signs or what maybe the feminine means to you and, and what are those signs? I have a very different outlook than many people do around the divine feminine. I believe that the divine feminine is attempting to rise up through all of us, men and women alike. Yes. And that many of the collective experiences that we are having are actually supporting that immersion into our divine feminine nature. 
And those types of experiences are meant to stir up the cauldron within us, which again is why I love that you talk about the ancestry and the bloodlines and in even the process of menstruation, because it's very much that yeah. the divine feminine dives into the messy. It, it feels the hard stuff. It's willing to explore the emotions, the shadows, the darkness, and allow that to cultivate new creation. You know, the universe was born out of a big bang and we can glamorize that as, oh my goodness, the cosmos was created in all of these planets. But what we don't realize is that was a confetti of creation. It was chaos. It was, it had to be that to create this entire universe. And the divine feminine is a lot like that. Yes. Stir up the chaos. It will stir up the cauldron so that we can uh, emerge as something even greater. And so I think to really deepen into the divine feminine work is to, again, commit to sacred activism. Yeah. Because sacred activism both for the soul and for the planet but it's also to have a deeply intimate almost eros like quality with oneself and truly understanding the nature of being exactly yes I, yeah I, I think that's so beautifully said and I, I really feel like the divine feminine is so well so many women for example have been taught haven't been taught how to trust ourselves how to trust our bodies and that blood is that constant reminder of trust, of asking us to trust this process. And I, I also really thank you for weaving in kind of the more transpersonal or cosmic aspect of the divine feminine that she's not, it's not just for women. This, the rising is not just for women, definitely for us, but for men as well on the planet and the cosmos for every living thing. Yes, because what we're seeing in the world right now is just the eruption of so much that's repressed within us. And when we will allow all of that into the open, not in a reactive way, but into the open light of our consciousness, then all of a sudden we will really discover what true wholeness is. We're, we're still pushing away half of ourselves. Yeah. And this is a beautiful invitation to a true experience of not only love, but unconditional love, yeah. not only empathy, but true compassion. That's such a beautiful way, I think, to kind of begin to wrap up. Is there anything that you feel is really important to share that we didn't touch on today? You know, I think it's it's just important for individuals to begin engaging the conversations around their signs. You know, I think it's been in the closet. There's still so much spirituality that kind of remains in the closet. There's so many topics that seem to be still a little bit taboo. And I know that Sacred Stories Publishing is is doing a beautiful job with the Common Sentient series of bringing the mystical to the mainstream through this series of books. And signs are one of those things that everyone has. Mm -hmm. And so invite people to be in conversation about it, invite people to share about their signs. Because the one thing that I know happens when you do that is more and more signs appear for you because you're more comfortable with them. You know, it, it is about being open and receptive. And if you can't even talk about them, if you're, if you're holding on to them, if you're tight with them, it's kind of like that law of attraction conversation that you had. If you're stingy with your signs and your spiritual experiences, how can any more come to you? Yes. <laughs> we are generous of spirit and we have to be generous with our signs and we right. have to be generous with our messages and with what we are here to do on the planet. And when we do that, we model by example, a way to be more deeply in our humanity, to be connected and to share all that's beautiful about life. So mm -hmm. I suggest everyone dive into their sacred encounters, pick up the book, signs, <laughs> go get your copy, buy a copy for a friend or a book club and go have a discussion. <laughs> that's, that's what I was going to say. A book club would be the perfect oh, it would place. Be so fun. It would mm -hmm. be so much fun to, to share that type of thing with, with friends or with family. It yeah. would be a really beautiful, delightful thing to experience, but you'd be amazed at how it bonds people. Yeah. It really does bring you closer when you can speak about these kinds of things with someone else. It does. It really does. It really does. And again, it helps you 
trust yourself. Like I'm not crazy. There are <laughs> others that are experiencing this too. Exactly. That's yeah. right. We're all unicorns. That was another sign for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure. It really has. Well, it's been a delight. You have been just so wonderful and delightful. And I celebrate the work that you're doing. Thank you. And um, just live out loud with it because <laughs> the world needs each and every one of us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Following in your footsteps in my own way. <laughs> it's really important to have um, guides and mentors, I think, too. And and so I feel really fortunate that I've seen my mentors as signs along my own pathway. Even yes. if you don't know, you're my mentor. <laughs> <laughs> that really is a beautiful way to yeah. utilize the signs. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks everybody for watching. And once again, if you liked this video, then go ahead and hit like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel and share this video with other like-minded souls. Until next time, ciao.